Throughout the Middle Ages, the papacy was one of the most influential institutions in Western Europe. In this video, we'll take a look at five popes who profoundly impacted medieval history. Their influence can still be felt, even today. Number 5. Pope Alexander II, 1061 to 1073. In the 11th century, the popes were pushing for reforms in the church that would shape European civilization for centuries. These reforms are most frequently associated with Pope Gregory VII, but often overlooked is the pope who came just before him, Alexander II. He was the first pope elected entirely by the College of Cardinals, without interference from the Holy Roman Emperor. This was one of the early fruits of the Reform Papacy, which sought to free itself from secular powers. Alexander II fought simony and insisted on clerical celibacy. His papacy pioneered ideas about the role of the knightly classes in Christendom that would ultimately solidify around the Crusades movement. When Norman adventurer Roger of Outeville defeated a Muslim army in Sicily at the Battle of Jerami, Alexander blessed the expedition and even offered spiritual indulgences to the knights who'd participated. Alexander II took a similar interest in Spain, where he helped organize the campaign known as the Crusade of Barbastro against the Moors. In 1066, Pope Alexander gave a papal banner to William the Conqueror, whose invasion of England he viewed as the righteous overthrow of a tyrant. Although not as well known as other popes in our list, Alexander II pursued a clear vision for the church. His reign had a lasting impact that would shape Christendom throughout the High Middle Ages and beyond. Number 4. Pope Gregory VII, 1073-1085 More than any other man, Pope Gregory VII is today most widely associated with the reforms of the 11th century. In the investiture controversy, Pope Gregory took on the Holy Roman Emperor, Heinrich IV, who resisted the idea that the Pope alone and not the Emperor had the power to select bishops. Gregory rigorously enforced clerical celibacy and attacked simony, the selling of church offices. Gregory's birth name, Hildebrand, signified to his allies a bright flame, while to his enemies it meant a brand of hell. He was indeed a man of fiery zeal, whose strength of will ensured success for the reforms, even when all seemed lost. The reforms were particularly troublesome to the Holy Roman Emperors, for in their domains, bishops were often important feudal lords. Heinrich IV refused to cooperate with Pope Gregory's rulings, this drove the Pope to excommunicate the Emperor, leading to the famous Walk of Canosa, in which Heinrich, shoeless and wearing a hair shirt, stood outside the castle of Canosa, begging the Pope's forgiveness. Ultimately, the Emperor would invade Rome itself and place his own anti-Pope on the throne of St. Peter. Pope Gregory VII ended his days in exile, at Salerno in a lonely castle by the sea, seemingly defeated. But his reforms would ultimately prevail, resulting in a rejuvenated and independent church that would play a decisive role in the High Middle Ages. Number 3. Pope Innocent III, 1198 to 1216. Perhaps no pope in history was more powerful than Innocent III. He exercised a broad influence over the states of Christian Europe and in many respects acted as overlord to all the crowned heads of the West. Innocent reigned during the very heights of the High Middle Ages, when the Christian West was experiencing a renaissance of culture, commerce, art, learning, and territorial expansion. Innocent's papacy played a great role in these trends. Innocent presided over the Fourth Lateran Council, at which was defined the doctrine of transubstantiation, the process by which bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ during the sacrifice of the Mass. Innocent greatly expanded the Crusades, helping to refine the institutions of crusading in both Spain and the Holy Land, as well as launching the Albigensian Crusade against the Cathars of southern France. Innocent called the Crusade in Spain that resulted in the great victory at Las Navas de Tolosa in 1212, but the Crusade he organized in 1204 to reconquer Jerusalem instead was diverted to Constantinople, a development that horrified and enraged the Pope. Innocent III is remembered as a great legal mind whose papacy produced considerable refinement of canon law. His papacy stands as the clearest model of church primacy over the secular world, in which the Pope, as Christ's vicar, holds spiritual authority while still respecting the temporal authority of kings. Number 2. 
Pope Gregory the Great, 590-604. While strolling through the marketplace of Rome one day, a monk by the name of Gregorius encountered some people with golden hair. He asked one of his companions, Who are they? Gregorius was told, They are Angles, pagans from the far north. No, not Angles, Gregorius answered. They are angels, and he predicted that their race would play a great role in the kingdom of God. This Gregorius would become Pope Gregory the Great, and by tradition, it was this encounter that inspired him to send missionaries to convert the English. This was the first large-scale mission dispatched from Rome, and at the dawn of the Middle Ages, represented a seminal moment in the conversion of pagan Europe. Gregory the Great reigned during a tumultuous age. His papacy acted as a beacon of civilization and learning in a Rome still reeling shortly after the collapse of the Western Empire. He emptied the papal treasury, ransoming prisoners and caring for the victims of plague and famine. He's also well known as a liturgical reformer, whose efforts shaped the mass and Christian spirituality. His vast writings constitute the most extensive literary corpus produced by any pope between the 5th and 11th centuries. Gregory the Great's papacy represents a link between classical Rome and medieval Christendom. He ruled with the wisdom and practicality of the most capable of the old Roman emperors, while he nurtured his flock with a piety and dedication that earned him the title of saint shortly after his death. Number 1. Pope Urban II, 1088-1099 In 1095, at the Council of Clermont, Pope Urban II delivered what may very well have been the most impactful speech in history. In a rousing oration, Urban called on the knights of Western Europe to restore Jerusalem to Christian control. This was the moment that launched the Crusades movement proper, combining the ideals of the church and the nobility in ways that would change the course of Western civilization. Urban II came from Gregory VII's reformist camp. He was an intelligent, broad-minded man who sought to heal past tensions between Western Christendom and the Byzantine Empire. He worked carefully to build a close relationship with Emperor Alexius I Comnenus, and indeed it was an appeal for help from Alexius against the Seljuk Turks that prompted Urban to call for the First Crusade. Urban's project resulted in the conquest of Jerusalem in 1099, an event that exhilarated the whole of Christendom. It was the memory of that triumph that solidified in the Western mind the concept of crusade, a sacrificial campaign waged for the good of one's fellow Christians to vanquish God's foes on earth. This shaped not only the Crusades movement, but an entire outlook on the role of the Christian warrior in society, which in some ways echoes down to our own day. The music used in this video is from Lit by the Sky, an album by my band Roman Lion, available via the link below.